Welcome to the CompTIA Network Plus N10008 exam. This is chapter one, network models. I credit total seminars for the lecture visuals and some of the lecture ideas. This is a new video series. The reason why I'm making this is to have more of a visual learning experience for students and also you can listen to it if you're on the go and it's totally fine. It works either way. Okay, so let's get into it. Here are the objectives for this chapter. So instead of making an objective video for each single objective, I'm going to make chapters and bundle objectives together, more like a book. Okay, so Objective 1.1, compare and contrast the Open Systems Interconnection, or OSI, model layers and encapsulation concepts. Okay, we have 1.2, explain the characteristics of network topologies and network types. And then we have 2.1, compare and contrast various network devices, their features, and their appropriate placement on the network. Okay, let's get started. So we're talking about OSI model layers. What is a layer? So if I say layer two switch or layer three switch, does that mean anything? There's so many different layers that we need to know. A, P, S, T, N, D, P. A lot of people use the acronym down here. All people seem to need data processing. Okay, got my pointer. So we're going to focus on layer one and two first. So that would be the physical and data link. Okay. So these are network interface cards, or we call them NICs. Your computer may have a hardwire NIC like this, or maybe you have a laptop with a USB-C and you can hardwire yourself into a jack that way. And we'll also look at the topic of Mac or media access control. Um, I put a little joke here, Mac and cheese. So a MAC address is actually on your NIC, on the network interface card. If you look at it closely, you should be able to find some sort of label or sticker where you can find it here. And um, alternatively, if you do an IP config slash all, you will get your MAC address in that slash all. Okay, moving on. So sending data. If you were to physically look at the network cable and look inside of it, you would just kind of see well pulses like that. The best way for us to visualize that is to do the one and zero, the binary calculations of a computer. So if it's one, it goes up that way. If it's zero, it goes this way. So it'll have uh, some sort of resemblance to that, but not quite exactly. Okay. Let's look down here. This looks like a frame. Uh, we have the recipient's MAC address. We have the sender's MAC address, the type, the data, and the error correction, FCS, or we call it CRC. Okay, let's try to visualize sending from one media access control to the other. So if you have um, a re someone you're sending to, it'll look like that and you have to say where it came from so it'll look like that and when it's done it'll go into its little encapsulation and be sent off into the network okay so then we looked at how to send data via mac but what about receiving so if you have a switch layer 2 switch um, then it'll be intelligent and know well, hey, this is not this computer. Is it this one or is it this one? It'll know who has which Mac by identifying it and sending it to the correct place. Okay, so imagine that this is your computer in this cloud. You have some data from the computer and now it needs to leave the computer and go to a switch like we looked at earlier. So this is our little Nick man here. It's pretty cool. He's getting ready for the data to come in. Okay, and we can see on this picture, receiving the data, we're encapsulating it like a capsule, right? Um, and then from the NIC, it's going outside to a switch or it says here central box. Okay, 
and the NIC sends the frame when no one else is using the wire and the frame has the MAC address for this NIC. So it knows where to go. So that is layer one and two. We can visually see here in this picture that switches and NICs will use layer one and two. It's very important. Having physical connection, that's good. And having um, the data link, knowing that the data is working, the NIC lights are flashing on and off, then you know that it is sending. Okay, let's take a look at layer three. Layer three is the network layer. So we talked about NICs and we talked about MAC addresses, but we didn't talk about the granddaddy of all, which is internet protocol, or most people just say IP. So if I do an IP config, like we mentioned earlier, we can see our MAC address here, but what are these addresses down here and what exactly do they mean? Well, on layer three or the network layer, things get a little bit more complicated and there's a lot more configurations. Any kind of home router like this will be intelligent enough to transfer internet protocol packets back and forth to where they belong. Let's look at an example. Okay, so here's a pretty basic network. We have a switch and we have four different computers. Let's take a look at their MAC addresses. Do they look a bit similar? No, not quite. That one and that one maybe. Um, and then we have addresses like 6.5, 6.6, 6.7, 6.8. .6 Here is what a uh, IP packet looks like. You'll need to know the destination IP, the source IP, and the data, which is not quite the same as layer 2 with the frames. Okay, frame versus packet. So what exactly is a frame? What is a packet? People mix it up quite a bit. Well, frame is the whole segment of the data. So you're gonna have headers that will be either uh, removed and replaced with other things. And then we actually have the IP packet here with the IP header and information so it knows where to go and the data that it's sending. And uh, FCS is the error correction. So let's make sure that it corrects any problems. Okay, we're getting ready to encapsulate this data in the same way that we did for Mac, but you can see here that we don't have Mac addresses. Instead, we have .12, .75. So once it's inside an intelligent network enough to know where to go for IP, this is what it would visually look like. Okay, frame removal is a big part of layer three as well. Frames get stripped all the time and new frames get added once they know where to route it correctly and it comes in. So I really like this picture. It's pretty easy to visualize it with the colors. The, the blue is the new frame and these are the old frames. Okay. Transporting packets via TCP. So layer four is transportation. So let's look at how we transport that data. Once we actually have a physical connection, once we know the data link is good, once we know the IP address is good, how does it actually send this information over IP? Well, it uses transmission control protocol. You'll often hear TCP over IP. This is what an IP packet looks like. We were looking at before. Here they have port numbers a sequence number, acknowledgement number, and more data. So once it starts transporting, you'll have to know different ports and where to send it. I like this little comic here, it's cute. Okay, I got your data. Uh, okay, next one. Um, I didn't wanna leave out UDP. UDP's, I mean, not as common, but it's common enough. You'll find that some services use UDP. The most common example that I can think of this is Dynamic Host Control Protocol, or DHCP. That's how we get an IP address if it's automatic. So this DHCP server does not care who you are. If you send a discover request, it'll offer you no matter what. No matter who you are, what device you are, it doesn't care and it'll automatically give you an IP address. It will constantly be listening for an offer and it doesn't stop. And it doesn't care who gets it or not. 
case session. So we can transport our data, but what can we do with it? Who does it go to? What kind of services can we use? What kind of applications can we run? Why does it need to be on the network? Here's a great example that we have computer C. Computer C is Shannon's system, which is connected or shared to a uh, printer. So computer A and computer B want to use this printer. This is a great example of session and knowing where to route the data to and make sure that your request is received, you're able to print, and life goes on. And that's a shared resource. That's a good example of session layer. Okay, next layer. Uh, sorry, we're still on layer five. Uh, a great example for you to do at home if you're just learning this is to use Netstat. Netstat li will list all of your connections if they're established or if they're listening or they're offering or they're acknowledging or sync or whatever. But if you run a Netstat, you can find all the connections on your computer that are active. This works in Linux, uh, Mac, and Windows. Same command. Okay, layer six is presentation. So this really focuses on the format and encryption most of the time. Here's a great visualization of something that's coming from the session layer. Oh, sorry, from the application layer, and it goes back down to the session layer. So maybe the application is trying to send something to a computer. Okay, on the other end, we have from the session layer, we have some data, and we need to send that to an application. So this is how we present the data coming in and out and where it's going. Um, it really depends on what you're doing. So it'll be a little bit more clear once we look at layer seven. Okay, here's layer seven application. This is the most visual layer. So a very common example would be, I don't know, like Google Chrome, just browsing a website. How are you getting the data? How is it being transported? How is it being converted into presentable data? And how do you see it on this application? So we have satisfied all of the seven layers and how we use them. We have give, given some basic examples and you should be very familiar with hubs, NICs, switches, routers, understanding uh, how it transports, how it uh, can strip frames and add frames, knowing the session and the routing tables and where it's going and who routes it, uh, the data conversion, making sure that things can be encrypted or they're formatted correctly for the, for the computers or the applications. And then we have application programming interface, and how the application interacts, Okay, so that's the end of the OSI layers. Let's go into some pop quizzes like I usually do. Okay, pop quiz, I'm gonna read all three of them and you can think and if you know the answer, you can just shout it out or put a comment in the video. What is the difference between a switch and a router? That's question one. Yeah, they are different. Okay, question two. What layer does a MAC address operate on? And what about IP addresses? Okay, number three, what OSI layer keeps track of connections and routes it correctly? So think about those questions and answers. We're going to answer them right now. Okay, what is the difference between a hub and a switch? Hubs are old. You will not see them in the wild, maybe in the bottom of someone's storage basement or a time machine. I have not seen a hub for a very long time. Hubs are not intelligent. If you look at this picture, all they do is share connections and just repeat things. So if, if any data comes into this hub, it sends it to all these computers, which is okay if you're on a small network, but what if you have 50 computers, 100, 200, 1,000? then you definitely cannot use hubs. That's gonna create way too much traffic. You need something smarter. So you're gonna need something like a managed switch. This takes the session and transport layer in a totally different way, and it routes it correctly to the correct computer where it needs to go. So that causes a lot less um, broadcast storms, as we say. So these are old broadcast domains or collision domains, and these are more modern ones. 
Okay, next question, question number two. What about a MAC address? Uh, yeah, what layer does MAC address operate on and what about IP? Okay, MAC addresses are tied to the NIC that we were seeing earlier. And the NIC and the switch and the cables operate at layer two and one. And IP is a bit more intelligent, so once it actually gets inside of a network and it knows what IP address to send it to, because we don't just function on MAC addresses only. That's important at layer two, but at layer three, it's a totally different game. Okay, last question. What OSI layer keeps track of connections and routes it correctly? Uh, we have a little picture here of Netstat. Do you remember Netstat? Which layer is that? Can you take a guess? Okay, it is actually the session layer. So all the different sessions and who is listening, who is active, who is acknowledging, you can see them at the session layer. Thank you so much for watching my first video in this series. I hope you enjoyed it. Have a great night.